As shares and research in motion continue to lose value, one starts to wonder at what point the stock might hit rock bottom. Our next guest says part of RIM's true value is in its vast portfolio of patents. For more, uh, we turn to Rich uh, Ehrlichman. He's president of IP Offerings, and he is in New York. Good to see you, Rich. My pleasure, Mark. Now, Research in Motion estimates that its patent portfolio is worth about $3.4 billion. Is that, uh, is that a fair assessment? Is it higher? Is it lower? I think it's a realistic expectation given some of the recent uh, sales and uh, activity in the telecom handset uh, space. Uh, three examples of that are the Nortel auction, which uh, resulted in a $4.5 billion sale for 6,000 patents. And comparing that to the, all the businesses only sold for $3.2 billion, and that was a major uh, dynamic change to the way the industry had previously valued IP assets. A second is the AOL sale, which resulted in about a million dollars per patent. And the third element is Google purchasing Motorola Mobility for $12.5 billion. And many people believe the uh, underpinning in that particular sale was 17,000 patents that Motorola Mobility owned. That general um, level of valuation is between 750,000 per patent to 1 million. And when we look at the RIM portfolio, which is, let's use 3,000 as a ballpark figure, the math would result in about a three billion dollar potential valuation. Now, do you think that RIM is doing enough to take advantage of this patent portfolio and to monetize it? No. I think that RIM has some seminal outstanding assets and patents. They've been increasing their patent issuing in the U.S. In 2011 they w uh, issued about 660 patents which is an increase from 2010 where it was about 470. That trend has been continuing since 2005 and I would anticipate it will continue to increase. I believe that RIM has been on the defensive, not the offensive. And what that means to the shareholder is they've been paying rather than receiving in the IP monetization space. Our recommendation would be to really develop a significant IP monetization strategy that could have a number of elements. One is patent assertion and licensing, brokerage sales as a significant way to turn that defensive posture to an offensive posture and also have the ability to create significant shareholder value from those IP assets. Rich, do you think that Research in Motion uh, is uh, more defensive with its patents because it's kind of scarred from that uh, case several years ago where it was accused of infringing NTP patents and then they eventually had to pay out, I think it was over $600 million. That is correct and it's highly likely, but that's many years now. The current environment with the three examples that I just mentioned, the significant uh, revenues that are involved in cell phones, smartphones, and that whole convergence to a mobility platform. RIM was, you know, an early leader, you know, for various reasons that leadership has shifted. However, they have significant research and development that's resulted in significant patents, and they, my recommendation is they need to put in place a aggressive intellectual property monetization strategy and then execute that plan, which will allow them to return huge profit to their shareholders from previously invested um, monies in R&D. Well, thanks so much for your time today, uh, Rich. It was enlightening. My pleasure, and thanks for having me. Rich Ehrlichman, president of IP Offerings. Uh, he joined us from New York.